In the weather today, we've reached the fall equinox coming up this weekend. There's that satellite imagery. You can see that Terminator line is straight up and down. It is displaced a little bit to the east because this is an artificial graphic, but it does show you the nights and the days are equal in the northern and southern hemispheres. Looking at North America, kind of a quiet weather pattern, but you take a look down at the South and Central America, it is a little bit stormy, and we do have the potential for tropical cyclone development going into next week. We'll look at that in just a little bit. Looking at the surface map for this afternoon, most of our interesting weather is indicated by the air masses and not necessarily the fronts. If we look at the thickness patterns, the red dashed lines, we see kind of a bullseye in the southwestern deserts and into Southern California. This is a strong upper level low. Here is the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. This is up at about 18,000 feet, about three miles in the mid troposphere. And we see that deep upper level low, about 569 decameters across the eastern California deserts. This will be lifting to the northeast over the weekend and into the Great Plains as we get into Sunday. Kind of a sparse cloud field on the visible satellite loops, but numerous convective anvils across the Mojave Desert and into southern Nevada. The current radar out of Edwards Air Force Base does show a lot of convection throughout the southwestern deserts all the way down to Palm Springs, and you can make out that cyclonic spin due to the influence of the mid and upper level low. Also some showers and storms all across southern Nevada, extending all the way to Area 51, located about right there, across the Nellis Range, across Caliente, and some areas around the Las Vegas area. It looks like the valley not really getting anything at this time. Looks like the main Bear Clinic cloud shield is out in New Mexico and southern Colorado. We can look at the water vapor imagery to get a better view of what's going on. And this shows more of that comma cloud structure. That's going to be the cold core upper level low, traversing the southern California deserts with a pronounced dry slot moving into Arizona. And here is the main Bear Clinic cloud field. We can see that there is cyclonic curvature in the wind field right here and some evidence of an upper level ridge across Colorado and the Central Plains. Elsewhere around the country, from a meteorological perspective, how would we quantify what we see right here? I know a lot of programs will point out where the fronts are and where the weather is, but what we really want to do is focus on the air masses, the weather regime, the weather patterns, and relate that to what we usually have this time of year. Now, typically, we are getting out of that Bermuda high pattern, where we have extensive anticyclonic flow across the south, bringing that wind from the south, moisture, warm temperatures, tropical air. We don't really have that. In fact, we've got a little bit of a northerly flow through the southeastern U.S. and indeterminate through Texas, maybe very slightly northerly. So this is somewhat of a polar front regime, and we've got this little kind of a Alberta clipper, very weak one, moving southeast through the Midwest. Of course, we've got our great Pacific system in the southwestern deserts. There's the cold core low. There's the baroclinic front. Barely has any structure at this time, but it may undergo some frontogenesis over the weekend. We've got a new push of cold air coming in from western Canada and the Gulf of Alaska. Temperatures back behind that rather cold 50s and 60s. Then going up into Alaska and Canada, kind of round out our tour here. It is stormy in the Gulf of Alaska. There's a 997 millibar system well west of Juneau producing a lot of precipitation, gusty winds out there in the Gulf of Alaska, and there are gale warnings in this area right here. The interior of Alaska looking rather mild, continuing those 40s, and we do have a winter storm warning in the Brooks Range around Anaktuvik Pass looking for 6 to 12 inches of snow. That includes the Dalton Highway, which connects Fairbanks to the North Slope. And just a heads up, we are looking for a strong atmospheric river situation in southeastern Alaska, British Columbia, coming up for Monday and Tuesday. And I do try to show that to you wherever I can. These are 
atmospheric rivers, one across the eastern Pacific, another back there in Japan associated with a lot of the tropical air out there in the western Pacific. And if you take a look at the animation, here comes this big slug south of the Aleutians over the weekend and slams into southeastern Alaska, British Columbia for Monday. And that will move mostly into the western part of Canada. Then we have another push coming up for late next week. That'll hit Washington and Oregon around Friday. And you can see the northwesterly flow right there. That's very much a fall type pattern. And of course, we'll wait and see what this does. There's a look at the upper level chart for this evening, dominated by a long wave trough across the western U.S., long wave ridging in the eastern U.S., and a Rex block. Got that cutoff high north of a cutoff low between Massachusetts and Quebec. Very strong EPO pattern out in the Pacific. Got 70 to 80 knot winds up there at 500 millibars flowing right from the Aleutians into British Columbia. The subtropical high has backed off into the Del Rio area of Texas, putting most of the country under westerly flow and another branch of the subtropical high way out there west of California. The pattern over the weekend going into next week is somewhat progressive. The system's mostly trying to evade that blocking pattern along the east coast, so pretty much pushing up there into Manitoba and Ontario. But as we get into later next week, things become very progressive. Maybe a little bit of blocking right here. Not sure if that's really enough to qualify, but some definite ridging in the Atlantic and things are wide open from the Pacific across the northern states and the Canadian prairies. So we get a succession of troughs moving into Saskatchewan, Alberta, British Columbia. There's the atmospheric river inbound into Washington for next Friday. A little bit of subtropical ridging building across the Rockies for next weekend, the 28th actually, and of course a tropical cyclone in the Gulf, very possible. Looking at our stream function computations from the GFS, a couple of waves all through this Central American area, but there is no clearly defined disturbance. If we go all the way through Saturday and Sunday, we still don't have anything. So this is not only early in the storm's life cycle, this is well before the storm has even formed. So this is a very precarious forecast. And it is only by Monday or Tuesday that we see signs of something developing near Honduras. And this is 75 hours out. And then we see this low come together right here. This has taken a while to come together. And finally, we have a cyclone, possible tropical storm, tropical depression, and strengthening into a hurricane later next week. The current track from the GFS taking that right up towards around Gulfport, then moving inland into Mississippi. Here's another view of things. This is the integrated vapor transport. Again, this is more of a mid-latitude tool for finding atmospheric rivers, but I do find it picks out some of these tropical details. And you do see this region brewing there off of Honduras towards Cuba. And then we get our tropical cyclone coming together around Saturday or Sunday the 28th or 29th. Not this weekend, but the next weekend. Here's how things play out on the European model. Again, we have to go all the way up to Tuesday to see anything happening, but you can see the stormy area across the Yucatan, and the European model actually goes for development in the Bay of Campeche. So that's a definite core difference between the GFS. So we see that cyclogenesis out there in the western gulf and lifting northeast and that goes for landfall in the same area around gulfport but you know this is splitting hairs so that hurricane landfall over 200 hours out that is an eternity as far as tropical models and a lot could change between now and then i think a better use of time instead of pouring through model data which i'm not even going to bother with Go through your emergency supplies. If you're down there on the Gulf, make sure you're all stocked up. Canned foods, that's always smart to have. We still have several more weeks of hurricane season. All right, let's take a look at our weather starting with tonight. We've got this push of cold air coming into the northern plains, a transitional air mass in between, and of course our strong 
southwestern U.S. system. We go into tomorrow. We are looking at a slight risk of severe thunderstorms in eastern New Mexico around Clovis and Hobbs. There could be high winds, hail, and maybe an isolated tornado. Large marginal risk across all of eastern New Mexico and the western panhandles and widespread rain all the way northeast into Kansas and Missouri. The heat continues further south looking at 96 to 97 across Dallas and Oklahoma City. In the northeast, we've got this little backdoor front, a very slow, gradual push of cold air sliding down the northeastern coast. That will be dropping the high temperatures gradually as we go into early and midweek. The cold core low, that's pretty easy to pick out. That's going to be over northern Arizona, so it will be kind of an unsettled afternoon in the Four Corners area and the Mogollon Rim. Then we go into Sunday. That cold front makes its way through the northern plains and Midwest. So by afternoon, we're looking at something like this, say triple point around Chicago. A marginal risk sets up along this cold front, basically from western Missouri all the way out towards southeastern Kansas, western Oklahoma, and the Texas Cap Rock. There could be a few storms with large hail and high winds. Heavier rainfall possible across much of Missouri into Kansas, up to Iowa, rains also all the way back towards Denver in the Interstate 70 corridor. Cold air overspreads all of the northern plains for Sunday, looking at highs very cold, looking at 55 for a high in Denver, 55 at Goodland, 69 at Minneapolis, and 74 at Chicago. Those highs in the 50s will be as far south as Omaha, Concordia, Dodge City, and Springfield. So we're talking about this area right there. Then we go into Monday. This cold front continues progressing to the east. By evening, we're looking at something like this. Extensive rain all through the Midwest. About a 60 to 70 percent chance of rain through that area. Also rain down to the Ozarks. Cooler in the northeast. More of that cold air filtering down. Looking at highs in the 60s and maybe the 70s for Virginia. A small piece of that cold air expands across Kansas and Oklahoma, but it has modified significantly. Rain's developing in West Texas around the Big Bend as we start to get some upslope flow developing. You can see that southeasterly flow right there, bringing some moisture and condensation to the higher elevations, so it will be unsettled as we go into Tuesday. Looking stormy across North Texas for Tuesday into the Permian Basin, in the northeastern U.S., a lot of rain as we get isotropic lift over this cold polar air mass, looking at about a 70% chance of rain from Cleveland to Pittsburgh and down to Charleston. And in the northern plains, continued cool with highs in the upper 60s and 70s. Then we go into Wednesday, storms moving into the Midwest region. Another cold Pacific front moving into the northwestern U.S., that's the atmospheric river coming in right there. So rain's really picking up around Seattle and Vancouver. And then we get into the extended period. This is a very tentative solution. We're probably going to see a lot of variation somewhere between Florida or Texas or nothing at all. So we're, we'll just come back to that on Monday and Wednesday and look at things because it's not going to be clear for another three to four days. So, how have things been in your part of the country? If you're comfortable with it, please post in the YouTube comments and share where you are and what the patterns have been like. Myself and others will be very interested to know. Remember, if you contribute on Patreon, you not only get the Monday videos, you also get the peace of mind that you're supporting this channel and your name goes up on the closing credits. So you'll be part of history in the making. At least I like to think so. So we'll see you back here on Monday for a look at that developing tropical cyclone situation. That's Monday if you're a supporter. And for everybody else, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.